Rabaul is the only town in the world to be built inside the crater of an active volcano. In fact, the whole of the bay is the rim of an ancient volcano. Ancient, but not dormant. Eruptions are an everyday occurrence for the people of the town to take in their stride, but never take for granted. In the early hours of Sunday the 18th of September 1994, a cataclysmic eruption devastated the town. The old town still lies ghostly and deserted, smothered by volcanic ash many meters deep. But like a phoenix rising from the ashes, the town has been born again. Just a couple of miles from the remains of the old town, the new market is as vibrant and as colourful as it always was. The placid surface of the harbour today gives no hint of another cataclysm that ripped through here, the Second World War. As the main base for Japanese operations in the Pacific, Rabaul was a regular target for Allied bombing raids, and many warships now lie sunk on the seafloor of Simpson Harbour. Many of these ships are virtually intact. Due to the amount of volcanic ash that has settled in the harbour over the years, visibility is not always the best, and the ships appear ghostly, shrouded in layers of fine sediment. Tempting though it is to explore deep inside these wrecks, the greatest of care must be taken. It's easy to stir up the silt and kick up enough to create a disorientating cloud in which a diver can easily get lost. Two of the most popular wrecks to dive in the harbour are the Manco Maru, a 1500 ton refrigeration vessel, resting upright on the seabed the hull at 35 metres and the deck at 25 metres. And the Hakai Maru, a Japanese naval engineering vessel that's also intact and upright, lying slightly deeper at between 30 and 45 metres. Peaceful and calm in their undersea resting places, their decks, corridors and passages were home to fish. Today the harbour is busy with shipping supplying the whole of New Britain province and is also the centre for fishing operations. Commercial fishing boats scouring the rich surrounding seas for shoals of tuna. The tuna are deep frozen in the holds of the trawlers while at sea and when they return to harbour the trawlers offload their catches to huge motherships. An unlikely hotspot inside the bay for finding the unusual is the new pier at Kokopo. Though only recently built, the pillars and uprights have attracted a coating of marine organisms and a huge variety of macro creatures. It 
It doesn't take long for the creatures of these fertile seas to colonize any new structure. Frogfish are always difficult to spot. Sitting motionless, they appear like just another piece of sponge. Rubbish carelessly thrown away from the pier also creates a habitat for critters here. A stonefish waits in ambush beside discarded bottles. This shrimp is uniquely evolved for life on the sharp spines of a sea urchin. Wherever you travel around this intriguing country, there's always something new and different to encounter. With a maximum depth of just 6 metres, my first dive here lasted 130 minutes. The shallow sea floor and beds of grass alongside the pier are also a great place for finding other secretive creatures. Over 100,000 Japanese soldiers were stationed here during World War II and traces of their occupation are everywhere. Miles of tunnels honeycomb the hillsides where they sheltered from bombing raids. A whole complex that could hide a whole army. In some of these, barges lie abandoned. Artillery pieces litter the town and surrounding countryside. The museum in town is a good place to browse among a collection of some of the more unusual items that remain. Some sunken wreckage needs more effort. A trek through the jungle carrying full dive gear. But it's well worth the walk. the wreckage of a near intact biplane. It's actually a Mitsubishi plane that was used as a spotter aircraft during the war. Nicknamed Pete by Allied forces, the name has stuck and this site is known as the Pete biplane. It was attacked while at its mooring and gradually sank, virtually undamaged, to the seabed where it now lies 27 metres down. Kabaira is a young operation, diving's equivalent of a surf camp, family run and with just a handful of rooms. <laughs> 